If almsgiving heals the soul's insensitive power and prayer purifies the noose, fasting withers sensual desire and thus the whole soul is offered to God, healed. Fasting also humbles the body. Quote, privation of food mortifies the body of the monk, unquote. Yet excessive fasting not only weakens the body, but, quote, makes the contemplative faculty of the soul dejected and disinclined to concentrate, unquote, as the soul and body are linked. St. John of the Ladder writes about fasting. Quote, to fast is to do violence to nature. It is to do away with whatever pleases the palate. Fasting ends lust, roots out bad thoughts, frees one from evil dreams. Fasting makes for purity of prayer, an enlightened soul, a watchful mind, a deliverance from blindness. Fasting is the door of compunction, humble sighing, joyful contrition, and end to chatter, an occasion for stillness, a custodian of obedience, a lightening of sleep, health of the body, a cause of dispassion, a remission of sins, the gate of paradise and its delight, unquote. All these things which he mentions, on the one hand, show the scope of fasting, and on the other hand, indicate the fruits which it brings to the Christian who strives. That is why all the saints loved fasting. It is very important to mention that when someone begins to repent, he also begins to fast of his own accord, which shows that fasting goes with prayer and repentance. To be sure, fasting is a means and not an end. It is a, quote, tool for training those who desire self-restraint, unquote. But without it, it is almost impossible to conquer the passions and attain this passion. St. John of the Ladder is clear about this. As the Hebrews freed themselves from Pharaoh and experienced the Passover after eating bitter herbs and unleavened bread, so we too will be freed from the inner Pharaoh through fasting and humility. You must not fool yourself. Quote, you must not fool yourself. You will not escape from Pharaoh and you will not see the heavenly Passover unless you constantly eat bitter herbs and unleavened bread the bitter herbs of toil and hard fasting, and the unleavened bread of a mind made humble." Unquote. It is essential that we keep the fasts which the church has fixed and strive not to give satisfaction to the unreasonable demands of the body. 